Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And that is Winston playing with paper here. Uh, <laughs> He'll probably pop up and say hello in a couple seconds here, but I'll start with some announcements. First of all, our next free dinner at Wellness Forum's office in Central Ohio is next Monday, March 6th. So it's free. You're welcome to come and bring guests and we'll feed you a delicious dinner. I'm going to give a health talk and then you can ask questions. Uh, you do have to make a reservation though. So you can either send me an email. I need your name, email address, and phone number and how many people are coming. Uh, but you're welcome to join us for that. And also take a look at our cooking classes online. We have a bunch of them now. We're doing a couple a month. And um, so if you want to learn how to cook with um, plant-based foods and healthy eating, then join us. We have a great instructor. Joy Lawrence is our instructor for these classes, and you'll love it. Uh, second thing I want to mention is um, the clinical skills mini class is coming up Um March 23rd. Uh, had to reschedule it because of some other things that were going on. But in any case, that's coming up. I'm happy to do private uh, conversations with people. If you're interested in a career change, send me an email, pampopperatmsn.com. You can be a never trained health professional or somebody who's been in the healthcare business for years and just ready for a change. I think you know what I'm talking about. And, um, and we can have a conversation about it and talk about options. I've been at this for a long time. I don't know everything, but I know a lot. Happy to share, right? And then don't forget our fall conference with our special guest speaker, Vinny Prasad uh, from uh, the University of uh, California, author of 450 published articles. He does what I do on a much greater scale. Very outspoken, truth-telling kind of guy. I've wanted to meet him for years, and now I'm going to get my chance, and you can too. So with that in mind, let's talk about cancer, an important topic. So I'll start at the beginning. In 1971, Richard Nixon declared the war on cancer, then President Nixon. And the goal was to significantly reduce or eliminate death from cancer within the foreseeable future. Well, here we are, it's 2023, and we're 50 years past that date, and we have not reduced or eliminated cancer deaths. In fact, going in the wrong direction. Cancer deaths are increasing and cancer is expected in the United States to overtake cardiovascular disease as the leading cause of death very soon. Now, there are lots of reasons why cancer diagnoses and deaths are increasing. And so let's talk about diagnoses first. Many people who have been told that they have cancer don't have it. I mean, risk factors for cancer like ductal carcinoma in situ, are diagnosed as cancer, and then cancers that are unlikely to result in death if never detected, like prostate cancer in elderly men, and skin cancer, which results really from the relentlessly looking for it at every doctor visit practice, that uh, all of this contributes to inflated cases. But deaths in people who really do have cancer increasing, not decreasing, and an important reason for it is incorrect notions about cancer causation. And I'm gonna give you some examples. The majority of cancer research is still based on the genetic theory of causation, even though genetics plays a very small role. In fact, you may not know this, but the National Cancer Institute funded the Cancer Genome Atlas, or TCGA, which was charged with identifying and cataloging all driver mutations within DNA that lead to cancer. And the result is, I'm going to read this quote from the report, comprehensive sequencing was unable to find a single mutation responsible for the most important quality of cancer, the single feature of cancer responsible for 90% of all cancer deaths. It was a bust. And I could, I could give a three hour lecture just on this, but in spite of this, according to the cancer survey, which is conducted in France every five years since 2005, 67.7% of people who completed this survey believe that cancer is a hereditary disease. The author stated that this misunderstanding can, quote, lead people to think that prevention measures are unnecessary because cancer is just inherited. And to this, I would add that thinking that genes are the cause of disease kind of makes people helpless victims, which I don't want them to be about their health, knowing that there's a lot besides genes that's actually a pretty minor part of it puts people back in a powerful position. So it's not your genes, it's a very tiny percentage of the risk factor that's actually genes. Now, some other misunderstandings from the survey, about 41% of smokers think that the length of time you've been smoking is the biggest determinant of cancer risk. 58.1% think that the number of cigarettes you smoke every day is very important. 
respondents thought that the danger threshold for cigarettes was 9.2 per day. I guess as long as you stayed under that, you were going to be safe. And uh, the danger threshold for duration was 13.4 years, after which I guess you quit and you're fine. Well, actually, you would be, but I think that's probably not what most people do. About 34% of survey respondents agreed with the following statement. Smoking doesn't cause cancer unless you're a heavy smoker and have smoked for a long time. And then 43.3% agreed with the statement pollution is more likely to cause cancer than smoking. 54.6% think that exercising cleans your lungs of tobacco. You've got to be kidding me. And 61.6% .6 think that a smoker can prevent developing cancer caused by smoking if they know to quit on time, whatever on time might mean, right? Diet and excess weight are the third and fourth avoidable cancer risk factors after smoking and alcohol, but only 30% of respondents knew this. And speaking of alcohol, eight out of 10 respondents believe that some people can drink a lot of alcohol all their life without ever getting cancer. That's true, but alcohol is the second biggest cause of cancer, but only a third of survey respondents cited it without having been prompted as one of the main causes. 23.5% even think that in terms of decreasing your risk of cancer, it's better to drink a little wine than to drink no wine at all. So some people even perceive wine as preventing cancer? Well, this just shows you what a problem we have, because I don't think it's a whole lot different in this country, actually. According to Otto Warburg, one of the most important cancer researchers of all time, quote, unlike the prevention of many other diseases, the prevention of cancer requires no government help and not much money. And according to Tom Seafried, another important cancer researcher and author of the textbook, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease, in principle, there are few chronic diseases that are more easily preventable than cancer. Now, both of these statements are true, but only if people really do know the avoidable risk factors, which are you know, smoking, number one, drinking. Um, the alcohol industry has done a very good job of keeping people from knowing that. Uh, diet, a health-promoting diet, uh, reduces the risk a lot. Overweight obesity, which is a risk factor not just for cancer, but for everything else. Lack of exercise, poor sleep, chronic psychological stress and unhappiness. And you know, you just have to pay attention to your life. And I think that's one of the things that I've been talking to people more about, um, particularly in the last uh, couple of years. And that is that, you know, if you don't have some intentionality about your life, like what are my values? What are my goals? I, how long do I want to live? What do I have to do to do that? What are the things that I want to do? You know, it's hard to do almost anything that you want to do if you're not healthy. If you lose your health, you really lose your opportunity to do almost everything. So I think that it's, you know, I've always encouraged people, take a minute and think about what you're doing, what you want, and what your goals are. I want to live to be 100. If I could live to be 120, it would be even better. I have a lot of things I want to do. There's so many books I want to read and so many projects I want to work on and all that sort of thing. Well, you have to be healthy to do any of it. You're not going to do this from a nursing home bed. So understanding what health is comprised of and working on that, there's so much within our control. We, we really do have a lot of control over this. So anyway, that's all for now. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And if you want to learn more about cancer causation and genes and who Otto Warburg is, we have great cancer courses here that you might want to sign up for too. All right. As usual, I'll pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.